So the Kentucky Hemp Lecture Series carries on. This is the second one. Um, I want to dedicate this to all the champions that had come before um, that told you the truth, but you didn't give a shit because you want to sit there and say, oh, we know everything, and we just conform to what, what uh, society tells us. So you had Andy Plunkett, who had started the Students for Industrial Hemp at Northern Kentucky University. Andy Plunkett, he's a hero. He's a freedom fighter. Ronnie Lee Smith, who cured over 200 uh, forms of cancer. First libertarian candidate to run for sheriff in Kentucky. And, um, and also, you know, had uh, pushed for the legalization of the medicinal uses, which we just saw recently. Uh, Julie Denton, a Republican, another Republican. Yeah, Steve Brashear signed the bill, uh, but what's he going to do? Stand up against the legislature, and the will of the people. So, really, he's uh, his hands are tied there. So, and Gatewood Galbraith, right? So, uh, I got a Gatewood, the last free man in America. Gatewood Galbraith, he was Kentucky's Huey Long. He was a revolutionary before uh, uh, anybody else was saying anything. And actually, we should have elected him. We would have had a billion-dollar crop. We would have been making money. Kentucky wouldn't have been the poorest state. We wouldn't have all the problems that we have. We wouldn't have all this cancer and all these horrible uh, diseases. And, um, anyway, so this is dedicated to Gatewood Gabbard, Ronnie Lee Smith, and Andy Plunkett. Okay. So, some background information. Kentucky, there's a lot of exciting things that's happening in Kentucky right now. So, Kentucky recently legalized hemp, and Kentucky has legalized... Um, oh, I don't like the way my hair is looking. And this is the reason why I'm not, you know, um, I'm wearing a mask because of the fucking LMPD. Uh, but I wasn't liking the way the hair is all tucked in. I guess it don't matter, right? <laughs> anyway. Alright, that's stupid. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of exciting things that's happening in Kentucky right now. So the exciting things that are happening in Kentucky, um, we've legalized hemp, okay? And hemp is now legal. Um, as of April 10th, 2013. So that should be a date that you write on the calendar and you celebrate every year because that's one step closer to full-blown legalization. And the whole country is going to go that way. Uruguay, the government, the entire country of Uruguay is selling dime bags to, to the entire world. And, uh, and they're going to see that we're going to make a ton of money or they're going to make a ton of money doing that. So... April 10, 2013, we've legalized hemp. We haven't legalized marijuana yet, but the, it, within the con confines, uh, there's lots to be done, lots to study. Okay? So, a year later, uh, 2013 was when they passed hemp, but a year later, February 7th, one day before my birthday, President Obama signs the perennial federal farm bill, and there's an added amendment that's attached to it, which legalizes hemp for research purposes. So, Kentucky legalized hemp, but the Controlled Substances Act said that it was still illegal. So the feds could have been raiding Kentucky farms, and our attorney general, the fucking asshole that he is, Jack Conway, a Democrat who's been financing Operation Unite for a long, long time, uh, is very much opposed to this. He's very much against this. But, uh, uh, but now that the federal government has added an amendment to the federal farm bill, which was brought to us by... Uh, Thomas Massey and Rand Paul, Mitch McConnell, all Republicans, uh, John Yarmuth sort of helped, but Thomas Massey is the one that authored the thing, along with uh, two Democrats from Colorado and Oregon. But I'm talking about the Kentucky Republicans are the one pushing for the legalization of marijuana and hemp and the medical marijuana, whereas the Democrats are the ones pushing back. And they're, they're going along with it, you know, once it becomes popular and once everybody votes for it. But they're not the ones spearheading the debate. Okay, so there's an added amendment to it. So that legalizes hemp for research purposes only. So because the federal government has given the okay, the state government has passed. Hemp is now legal in Kentucky. It is legal uh, with the right licenses and procedure. Okay, so good. Yay, you know, we, we're not so we're not completely backwards. We're not like 50 million, you know, light years away. Uh, we're actually getting closer. So Kentucky's fourth congressional Republican representative, Thomas Massey of Northern Kentucky, is the one that had authored the amendments. Now, many Kentucky Republicans pushed for the legalization of hemp, as well as the legalization of mar uh, medical marijuana. CBD, but not THC. So who's the one that legalized hemp? Who's the one legalizing medical marijuana in Kentucky? The Republicans are, okay? The Republicans. Both Kentucky Senators Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell pushed for the federal amendment to the Farm Bill 
as well as Democrat John Yarmuth and Republican Thomas Massey. Republican Commissioner of Agriculture James R. Comer and Paul Hornback of the Senate Agriculture Committee were both instrumental in getting Kentucky to legalize hemp. You cannot underestimate James R. Comer. James R. Comer is the reason why hemp got illegal. It's the reason why medical marijuana is legal. So James R. Comer is a radical revolutionary. He is the agricultural commissioner who's a million times better than Richie Farmer. It turns out just because you got a last name Farmer, that doesn't make you a good agricultural commissioner. Uh, Richie Farmer was a former UK basketball player who thought he could get away with stealing lots of taxpayer money from Kentucky um, citizens. Uh, but uh, now he's spending his time in jail, so maybe he'll, 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 I don't know, become a man. He was actually, I feel bad for him because it seemed like he was a simpleton who uh, went along with the program of how Kentucky operates, but he got caught. So, uh, as soon as James Comer uh, had replaced Richie Farmer in 2011, James Comer was pushing for the legalization of hemp. And so, you know, this we're, we're going to see a lot of new things that happens in, in Kentucky, and I'm excited. You know, this is actually, my God, you know, basically I had thought that Kentucky was like uh, Haiti, is a third world country, no running water, high in cancer, everybody's beating up their kids, no, you know, no civilization, a failed state. There's the rich, there's the poor, people are barely hanging on, lots of jails, lots of prisoners, police brutality, poor education, lots of uh, toxic pollution. So, okay, so uh, they replaced Richie Farmer in 2011, James R. Comer, and he began pushing for hemp's legalization. Now, James R. Comer, he owns 2,300 acres of land, so he's actually going to, he's going to profit big time. He's going to make a ton of money on this stuff. Hopefully he does it in a fair away with the distribution of all the uh, people who can raise the things um, and so he doesn't get in any trouble. Now, James R. Comer, he also raises beef, timber, and hay. So he's a farmer. He's been a farmer for a while. Owns lots of acres of land. Uh, James R. Comer is basically a member of the Thomas Massey and Rand Paul Tea Party, but not the Matt Bevins, okay? So James R. Comer is very much libertarian, very much Thomas Massey, Rand Paul type-ish person. James R. Comer is also a Republican. A Republican, okay? And I can't stand the fucking Republicans. But I have to give credit where credit is due. And it's the Republicans who are actually telling the truth about the empire, about the police state, about the Patriot Act, about the NSA wiretapping, about, you know, Benghazi, about, like, any of these, you know, a lot of things that are going on right now. And they're the ones that are getting pot legalized, okay? Uh, hemp and marijuana is the same exact seed, cannabis sativa. It's just how you cultivate it. So marijuana and hemp is what I'm going to call it. Just It's marijuana hemp. It's not hemp. It's not marijuana. It's the same seed. It's the same exact um, genus species. Cannabis sativa. So, uh, James R. Comer is the only Republican holding the non-federal statewide elected office in Kentucky. So, he's the only elected Republican, and he's the one, uh, and the only elected Republican in Frankfurt's ruling class, and he's the one that got us hemp. The fracking love and Democrats didn't do diddly shit. Okay, the fracking loving Democrats, the the, uh, the the gay bashing Democrats, they didn't do nothing. Sarah Palin's called for legalization of marijuana. Ashley Judd would have been better than uh, Allison Grimes because she saw marijuana in her childhood home. She understands that it's not alcohol and it's not as big as a threat as all these lying Bible Belt Christians keep on telling us. Democrat Steve Brashear, he never got us casinos. He got elected twice. As governor, he had a mandate to get us casinos, but he never did it. He did not push it. He, he's, uh, maybe he just, maybe he Guantanamo Bay. Maybe he got, he wanted, that was his main issue. And, uh, and everybody was looking at that issue, and then he got all this other stuff. Hopefully that's what it is. But Democrat Steve Brashear was able to get Common Core passed. He was able to get Obamacare passed. And I think it's through executive order. So why can't the Democrat Steve Brashear give us an executive order for casinos? Maybe it's a good thing, okay? Gambling and stuff is not, I just believe in, uh, you know, we have a right to lose our own money. We have a right to our own body. We have a right to, you know, legalize prostitution, legalize all drugs, uh, regulate it, though, you know? And then we would actually be, uh, we would have to grow up and become adults instead of trying to protect our children as if they're like, you know, it's bullshit. It's just about prohibition. It's just about controlling other people. Anyways, uh, Democrat Steve Bashir. He did not get us casinos, and that allows Indiana to make all of the tax revenue. Uh, they're using tax dollars to 
uh, fight gay marriage, right? So Steve Brashear doesn't believe that we even have a right to our own bodies. Two consisting adults can't do what they want to do in their own home. Come on, Steve. Give me a break. Uh, th th this is not a good issue. You're going to be on the wrong side of history with this issue. This is, go, go look at the 1960s. You're one of the white people who's dumping ice cream on the heads of the black people. That's that's the side that you're choosing. This is also the side with the medical marijuana, the marijuana debate, okay? Gay marriage, people can do whatever they want to do. This is supposed to be a free country. We're allowed to do what we want to our own bodies. Let people be gay. Let people smoke some pot. So, uh, Brashear, he wanted to wait, read the bill. He wants to take his time. You know, he wasn't all for it. He didn't spearhead the debate. Kentucky's Attorney General, Democrat John Conway, has been a major enforcer of Operation Unite, and so has been um, um, Hal Rogers. So don't, I'm not, don't get me wrong. There's some Republicans that are absolute douchebags, and Mitch McConnell's been a douchebag for 29 years. But during this election cycle, he got us hemp. He got hemp legalized. So I will give Mitch McConnell credit for giving us hemp, which is the same seat as marijuana. That's Mitch McConnell who did that, not Allison Grimes. Okay, and Jack and Steve are Democratic. Allison Grimes is friends. So if we're going to judge a person by their friends and by the, their lack of statements, she hasn't said anything about, you know, support and legalization. So I'm going to assume that the Democrats of Kentucky are going to act like the Democrats of Kentucky. And Allison Grimes isn't going to do diddly crap about the medical marijuana. She's not saying anything. She's, we had a chance to make her progressive. Now she's going to be running to the right. Mitch is going to be running to the left. So whatever chance we had to make Allison Lundergan Grimes a, a progressive has, has been... Uh, we've squandered that opportunity. It's been blown away. So the hemp amendment allows the state agricultural departments and the college and universities to grow hemp as defined uh, the, as a non-drug oil seed and fiber varieties of cannabis for academic or agricultural research purposes. Okay, so let me repeat that. The state agricultural department is allowed to uh, raise it. This is, you know, for all the states that have uh, that legalize hemp and there's like 13 or so. So, uh, because of the hemp amendment to the federal farm bill, the control falls on the state agriculture department, which is James R. Comer, which was Richie Farmer's old position, and the colleges and universities to grow the hemp for the research purposes. So, it's between the, um, it's a, a co-op, it's a conjoining program. You need the colleges and the universities to have the place to do it, but the state agriculture department is the one who's going to administer it. So, they're going to have, they're going to get these private farmers, and then the private farmers are going to be raising it right for the universities. Um, and there's only a few universities. Not all the Kentucky universities got on board with this. So actually, if you're a university that wants to, uh, you know, get a part of the, this, uh, this big money-making scam. <laughs> it's not a scam, but uh, if you want to get a part of this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, progressive revolution. And I guess, I, I don't even know if you could call it progressive revolution. Maybe it's a libertarian revolution because... If the Republicans are doing it, they're the Libertarians. That's the Tea Party. So this is a Tea Party revolution. The Tea Party is uh, taking the legalization of marijuana debate over, and uh, and it should be an Occupy thing. We should be, you know, it should be an Occupy thing. So uh, because of the hemp bill, the amendment, and the way it's worded, the Kentucky Department of Agricultural Industrial Hemp Program is going to be run by KDA, Kentucky Department of Agriculture, while the universities conduct the research. Now, there's seven university projects. In Kentucky, that's going on right now. There's seven of them. There's seven different projects, and uh, and I'm gonna go through each one of them because each one of the projects have are raising the crop in different areas of Kentucky, um, and they also have a different purpose. So we're doing it for research reasons, and um, and you can raise an unlimited amount. You can raise how much ever you you feel like raising. You know, however much um, the 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 government, the uh, James R. Comer's Department of Agriculture allows you to raise. The first one. The first study is uh, the study of the Kentucky Heirloom Hemp Seed, okay? Uh, it's at a plot in eastern Kentucky, and they're going to be working with an old Kentucky hemp seed. They're calling it the Heirloom Seed, and this is in conjunction with Kentucky State University, which is out of Frankfurt. So the department's homegrown by Heroes Program, so you get military veteran farmers. Um, if you're a military veteran and you're a farmer, then you can jump on this old Kentucky hemp seed thing. It's the first pilot program. Kentucky State University is doing it, homegrown by heroes, and they're going to cultivate the heirloom hemp seed on a research plot in eastern Kentucky. So they're going to check, they're going to check out this heirloom seed, right? So what is this? The Kentucky bluegrass. We're, we're known for the bluegrass, right? What kind of grass can we raise? 
um, the Kentucky Heirloom. We're going to check this out. This is going to be uh, opposed to the, you know, the Italian seeds, right? The DEA went ahead and picked up all those Italian seeds. Well, those Italian seeds, you know, that's from Italy, right? So the Kentucky Heirloom seeds are the ones that come from Kentucky. So is Kentucky hip seed going to be the best seed? Or is it going to be the Russian seeds or the Chinese seeds? Or what seeds are going to be the best? So that's video two. Coming up with video three coming up shortly.